Hello guys, welcome back. I wanted to talk to you about Odin, Loki, and Tough Love. I know some people have drifted away since Odin's been around more, but that is what it is. And I did have a wonderful day yesterday, but being Odin and Loki, I spent time with both of them because you, you've you realized, and I finally realized, those are my two main gods. Those are the gods that are always with me, and I know I'm fortunate. Um, we're fortunate if Odin or Loki takes interest in us, and you, you, if you work with them, you know, you cannot make them take interest in a person. All the offerings and all the love and adoration is not going to make Odin do anything he wants to do, and it's not going to work on Loki either. In fact, Loki will get very resentful and angry, and then you'll be sorry you ever called on him. So, yeah, if somebody's ever told you you can force Loki to do something, they don't know what they're talking about. Even if it were possible to do something, we know from our lore and we know from personal experience that a Loki forced to do something will plan petty ve vengeful, blah, 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 petty vengeance, and he will get back at you sometime. He will wait. He will wait a very long time, but he will get his revenge. So, you know, you can't force either god to do something, and once they've picked you, you in general can't get rid of them. If they truly want a person, they truly want to be with you. It could take them years in a long, long of cases. I've noticed that's a common theme. But they will have you. They will just keep coming back until they have their way. Now, one of the things I got from Odin is a lot of tough love. Because um, it, every so often, even though those of us with disabilities do our best, we do have days where we're like, we don't want to do anymore. And that's just human natural. One second, please. Sorry about that, but, you know, usually I take like four or five hours off in the beginning of the day if my allergies are bad, but I'm like, this feels like they're going to ramp up and be bad all summer, so some days I'm just going to look like I've had a crying jag, and I'm sorry, but you guys kind of have to put up with it. Um, And the tough love I'm getting from Odin is coming from either the healing will come so you shut off and I don't have to hear you <laughs> because he's honest, or it won't come and you're going to have to deal with it and find a way around whatever disabilities or shortcomings you feel you have. And I just kind of looked at him. And he didn't say to be mean-spirited, but that's Odin. That's actually Odin being really nice. He was like, look, I know you're in pain. And I know you have all these disabilities, but either I'm going to heal it and you're going to be fine because I won't have to hear from you anymore. Or I'm not going to heal it and you're going to have to find your way around it. Now, that doesn't mean he's not concerned about us and doesn't worry if we're in constant pain or if we have disabilities. But it does mean that he will bring out the warrior in us and be like, okay, do you think a warrior would be crying on the battlefield saying, I got this one little pain right here, ow, and I can't go on. He's like, no, you're, you're going on, and I'm tired of hearing about this, and I'm tired of this manifesting, and you're putting your spear in your hand, and you're walking forward. And it came out last night. We were playing in VR together. I tried to take them both in, sometimes together, sometimes separately. And it was Odin's turn, because Loki's decided Loki doesn't like the coasters. And as you know, they revamped those coasters. And we were riding the zombie one. And there's this part where it's super scary, because they added a lot more zombies. And I asked Odin to protect me, just like I would ask Loki to protect me. And for about a millisecond, I could feel... Odin was going to protect me. And it felt like a flash of confusion, like he actually didn't know what happened to him or come, came over him. And he roared at me to protect myself that I had weapons. And my weapon was a selfie stick and my bare fist. So I was hitting a zombie with a selfie stick and punching him in the face. And Odin was encouraging me and going, good, good. Now, it's a set ride, so it didn't actually do anything. But it was very empowering to hit the big scary zombie with the selfie stick and punch him in the face. So that's an empowering story. And that's the kind of God he is. Now, if you were brought up Christian or you were brought up Catholic like I was, or, you know, Jewish or Muslim or whatever, you probably have a very different idea of God. You probably have an idea of a God that will jump out in front of you and be a warrior and protect you. If push comes to shove and it's needed, Odin will do that sometimes he needs to fill Valhalla. Um, but <laughs> I heard laughter, Becker. But there are also times where he's going to be like, look, I might ask you to do the big thing, the hard thing, and you're just going to have to deal with it. 
and you're just going to have to trust that I love you and that I chose you for a reason and I'm not entirely heartless. So it, it's been it's been a balancing act because it wasn't what I was taught to see a god as. But it's definitely been a, a balancing act. Loki, thankfully, doesn't believe in self-sacrifice. Well, he does, but he doesn't. Not to the extreme his brother does. And I kind of find they... Not some cheesy New Age Philly way. They kind of complete each other. Things that Odin will give me and be more generous about complete one part of my needs. And Loki completes the other part. Odin usually is genuinely sorry if he's hurt you. Usually. Unless he's trying to toughen you up, he's usually genuinely sorry if he's played too rough and he's hurt you. He does care about his people and he cares about their welfare. And as the leader, it's his job to make sure they're happy and healthy. Loki will just hurt you again. Loki will be like, Ah, you're a wimp, boink. Not always, not always. Sometimes he will very rarely surprise, but Loki's more of a jerk. Loki's more of a jerk. And sometimes that rubs off on Odin, and then you have twice the fun. But it was clearly a thing of I reflected yesterday. That, you know, I'm 43 now. If any other god had wanted to heal me, had wanted to, you know, cure my eyesight or any of the other health issues I have, they could have done it by now. Now, why Odin hasn't snapped his fingers and done it, I don't know. Why Loki hasn't snapped his fingers and done it, I don't know. Other than, um, I'm trying to take the attitude of stuff happens for us instead of to us. And I've noticed remarkably through my life, it's been a damn good thing that I do wear glasses because I've gotten hit a couple times with both eyes. And had I not been wearing glasses at the time, I would have lost the eye. So... Maybe that was it. I will never know. We won't know until we die, and then we probably won't know because Odin has better stuff to do than hold our hand and explain life to us, as I've been told before. <laughs> and it's like when I, I was uh, reading various stuff yesterday and looking at Pinterest, I realized I can actually read the runes pretty well, and I actually know what a lot of the runes mean. I just don't agree with most people on the runes. So even though I still, to my dying day, will get some of the runes the names mixed up, at least if I know what that rune is, and I know basic meaning, like fire or ice or water or something, Odin's happy. I'm never going to be a rune master where I can draw them and work with them. They just, they don't want to work with me. They're like a terror tech. They either want to work with you or not, and I've tried dry, drawing them. And if Odin's influencing them, it seems like I get a good drawing, but if I'm just drawing them at random, Nothing works. We tried the tarot deck that has the runes on it. It's kind of the same thing. Runes just... Runes don't care about my genetics. They know they're not going to do anything. And they don't, by the way. It has nothing to do with genetics. So don't let somebody tell you you have them in the blood. They either work for you or they don't. And so it's just been a thing of our gods will empower us. And it does sound kind of heartless because I was raised Judeo-Christian. And you know what I mean. The Judeo-Christian mindset. And, um... They expect miracles. They expect total healings in that. And our gods can do this, but they won't always do it. And why? I don't know. It's probably like asking, why doesn't the Christian god heal all the people that go to church in wheelchairs? I have no damned idea. Don't ask me. Um, Maybe it's part of our life lesson. Maybe it's actually a asset that we have that we don't realize we have. We usually are so used to not feeling sorry for herself, but being told that it's a handicap, where maybe it's not. Maybe we have to see it as an asset. One second, please.